What's up, players? It's World Boss Tay up in this mud. This is a video response for a good buddy of mine, fellow YouTube video producer named Ringo Simpkins, one of the all stars of this year's July Painting Challenge. He filmed a video just about every single day and uh, just a great guy, so talented, such a great painter. He is one of the venerable long beards, along with the old git who have so many years of experience in the hobby and can really you know share that with a lot of us on YouTube all around the world so that brings us to his 100 subscriber contest and I'm gonna be showing um, or answering his questions the first question was what do you enjoy about the hobby so I decided to take a trip down memory lane I typed in Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay first edition this was the book, the first edition rule book. And this is how I got started before I even knew that there was a miniatures game. This was the, the role playing game that got me into it. Paper and pencil with dice. And I just, I loved it so much. I had such a great time. Um, friends and I, one of them played a troll slayer like this guy. Another played in uh, just a human nobleman slash uh, warrior guy and then the third guy if you remember was a little halfling rogue so we had such great times and adventures and staying up till sunrise just about every every weekend role-playing and it was just the most fun and through that I started getting into the miniatures game and here we are the games workshop home base so what do I love about the hobby I love that it is a social thing, so not just a uh, like a video game that you could play all by yourself, or even a video game that you could play co-op or multiplayer with people that you don't ever see or interact with except you hear their voice. The Games Workshop games, miniature wargaming in general, is a social hobby. So you collect these guys, you make up lists, you take them out and then you you play against other people and I, I think that's great I think that's the most attractive thing about the hobby, it helps you to be creative, build up an army on your own, paint it in your house or in your garage or in your den or in your study or wherever and then take it out to the game store once a week however many times you want and and uh, take it out and play with other people compare lists and throw down dice and try and try and see who is gonna come out on top oh it's my lady boss how did that happen uh, the thing that is appealing to me as kind of like a creative person is that you get to not only collect these guys like uh, Magic the Gathering or Pokemon like a card game but you get them as bare plastic and then it is up to you to paint them up and you can paint them up however you want you could paint them up like they have here or you could paint them up in your own original color scheme that is completely you know alternative and not standard and that's what I love about it like with Magic and Pokemon and all those other games you can collect so many of these awesome, rare, hard-to-get cards, but they're always going to look the same. With these, you can convert them, you can kit bash them, you can give them the best paint job you can, and people will usually just be amazed the more work and effort you put into your models. It really shows. So that's what I love, the, the artistry, being creative, doing something that may not... Um, that may or may not match the color scheme that Games Workshop does is just is just so appealing to me. I when I first got into the hobby and or got back into collecting and war war gaming, I collected orcs and goblins and I just wanted to convert everything. I wanted every single guy to look different, and uh, I was kit bashing and swapping heads and uh, building. I wanted to build a savage orc chariot out of uh, just 
bunch of like green stuff like I wanted to make it look like the Flintstones where there was no bottom and they had to the savage orcs had to you know pedal with their feet like Fred Flintstone and Barney Rubble and you know I just had a great time as long as it has bores in the front and is on this size base I thought hey why not you know <laughs> that's what I love about the hobby being creative uh, and that brings me to the second part of the question what do I think YouTube has brought to the to the hobby so the ability to make a channel now that all of you guys and gals are watching me on is uh, fantastic and the ability to share what I'm doing with people all over the world put them into playlists and put all my videos into playlists and just share them with people and uh, I, I don't know you, I might not know you, I might know you, who knows, I might never meet you face to face, but, you know, we can interact and share and um, share in our love of the hobby every single time we log into YouTube. And I've got more than 500 videos, holy cow, really? Seriously, how many, how many videos do I have now? Uh, video manager. Lordy, lordy, 743. Holy moly. When I first started, let's let's go way, way back. Let's take it really old school. And um, I'd be interested to hear from you guys what's the first video you saw me, you saw of mine. You can put that in the comments if you want. Um, when I first started making videos, I did it because I wanted to push myself to... Um, to finish painting a bunch of dwarves that I was commissioned painting for a local friend of mine. And I thought, you know, by doing YouTube videos, I would be more motivated to, to actually get to work and, and to do good work. So, yeah, look at these. Wow, look how blurry they were. I was on the old flip camera. It didn't focus. Uh, if it did, I didn't know how to, how to focus it. And look at these first videos. My converted grot zap gun. Oh, good, good memories. <clears throat> um, yeah, so what do I think YouTube has brought to the hobby? The enjoyment of getting to track your progress from whenever you first start filming till now. Like, I can go back and look at my Orc War boss here and be like, think to myself, this was a great paint job. Even now, for me now. I can't believe how creative I was that I was able to incorporate all six of the major orc clans on this guy. Or to say, I can't believe that I was brave enough to try object source lighting on these dwarf miners, even though they came out looking like peeps. It's good to go back and look at your old videos sometimes, I think. So, oh, look at all these old metal wraith guard. Yeah, so that's what I, I think. Ringo Simpkins. The, the hobby is just such an enjoyment of itself. It's, it re relieves my stress, helps relax me at the end of the day, helps me be, continue to be creative. And what do I think YouTube has brought? I think it's brought a sense of community. Not only can I track my own progress, but I can share all of my work with the entire world. And uh, I love that. I love that people can go back and comment on these first videos and I try to still respond to all the comments that I get. And speaking of comments, I think I'm down to only a hundred left or something. I'm trying to respond to all these comments, but gosh, after the uh, July painting challenge, it's just so much. Yep, I think I'm I think I'm here. Hey, speaking of Ringo Simpkins, here it is. So if you guys don't know, I'm going to link this video to his Ringo's doing a 100 subscribers uh, contest. Uh, I guess it's you'd have to go back. But a uh, great guy. Like I said, definitely watch his videos if you haven't already. I'm sure that most of you who are watching my video right now know of him and have seen some of his videos because 
uh, you're probably following the July painting challenge that I just recently had, so you know who he is. But thanks you guys for watching, and sorry this has been running a little bit long. It's a late night for me working here in the War Boss Tay Man Cave, so I'm going to sign off now. But thanks for watching. Hope you all got a little bit of enjoyment, entertainment, or enlightenment from this video, and hope you have a good one. See you later.